It's time to give these things a home in the 190. Let's go. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to channel Anderson and welcome to today's video where we are going to be installing bucket seats in the 190E. We actually have one pretty much already installed. I'm going to remove this here in a second just to show you guys kind of how I set things up. And then we're going to repeat the process on the driver's side. We have Garagistics seat bracket kit here. This is basically the base plate. And then inside here, it's got two legs for the back side that'll connect with these Allen bolts. And then it also comes with the hardware to mount it at all four corners. And then we're also going to be using the rails, which I had to customize in my case just because these Sparkle Alphas are pretty wide, uh, like a 34 and a half inch at the um, top there. And then even the base is wider than your typical uh, bucket seats. So in most cases, if you got a normal set of seats, you're going to be able to do this without the modification that I'm doing. But uh, I'll show you what I did just to, you know, show the real deal of what I experienced. All right, and first, let me get this one out of here because I actually need to um, tighten up these bolts now that I'm happy with everything positioned. It's pretty much tight. I can sit in it, but you can hear still a little bit of movement going on. So I'm going to pull these four bolts that are just holding the seat into the rails. I'll pull the actual seat out itself. The rails will still be secured. And now we're going to tighten everything up with the seat out of the way. All right, guys, seat is out. And now I can go ahead and show you kind of the setup that I went with. So stock positions for the rails bolts to go through on the actual mount is over here and over here one of them i was able to use and then the other spot i just drilled out a hole uh, and i did so on both sides uh, sorry front side on both rails and then back side used the existing hole and then because the seats are so wide i ended up cutting a little relief into this so it could slide over where the um, buckle clip goes now that um, I could mount underneath as well, but it didn't really make a difference. The bolt still would have been in the way, so I just left it where it is. But uh, the thing I'm gonna do right now is actually tighten up these Allen bolts because I don't think I ever really cinched them down fully. Um, and those do hold the bottom legs on. So I wanted to uh, take things off so I could do that right now, which for this side, uh, I may need to um, remove my bolts so I can, get to those unless um, the lock nuts on them will keep tightening. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we're gonna move over to the other side. All right guys, this is all tidied up. Uh, it was kind of bothering me. I was still hearing some noise from this side because of the relief that I cut out here. It just wasn't making a good kind of flat seal over there. So I added one more acre point, just drilled out that spot and no more creakiness because that would drive me crazy. The squeaky wheel, squeaky wheel would drive me crazy as I'm driving, having the seat move around. So now no more noise, we're good, moving on. Thing is solid as can be. And the nice thing about these seats is because they're a little wider, a little more comfortable. These are probably one of the most comfortable bucket seats I've ever felt or had or sat in. Um, and I think we're gonna have enough room to get our B pillar panel back in here just barely and our door shuts just fine too. Can't show you guys the lights in there, but I test fit it earlier. Doors on these don't really get anywhere close to this. So this is totally fine and we'll still be able to use our stock seat belts. I just need to uh, pick up a uh, nut to match. Well, I might have one actually in my group of hardware over here, but these are the little um, special bolts that fit into those um, seat buckle adapters. Maybe I have a nut to fit onto these. Oh, matter of fact, okay, I got one. I just gotta find another one. Ah, and we're in business. Maybe, this looks a little too big. Okay, we'll see, but I should have something laying around. I'll find one. All right, guys, we're ready to get started on the driver's side. I actually have kind of been messing with lower section down here in the pedals, but that'll be for another video. Um, but we need to go ahead and get this done. So I'll show you guys how you put this in. All right, guys, so again, what's included in the kit? We got our base plate here. We have our four mounting screws to actually go to the floor. Uh, we have the bolts for lining up the legs. The legs are here, I'll show you. Basically just little 
kind of L-shaped brackets. We'll bust those out of the bag here shortly. So mount up on backside and yeah. And then other thing they include is this little USB um, adapter or charger so that you can uh, power it up if you would like and it kind of mounts um, I think either on the front like this or at the back side of the seat. So pretty cool. I might wire this up in my car to be honest just because it'd be nice to have like a little GoPro um, charging station. So something that we'll take a look at once we are in there. But let's go ahead, send this over to the driver's side. All right guys, so basically we've got our setup here and this can go, I mean, this can flip either way. It's the same, uh, symmetrical both sides. So it doesn't matter if it's one way or another as long as it's, you know, front and back. So uh, let's go ahead and set our front bolts in. And then I'll show you kind of what I did uh, for mine, getting things set up initially. And again, here's the hardware they include. Nice stainless hardware with some nice washers. All right, and then once you get those front ones started, we are going to essentially, see if I can find my location, there we go. We're gonna use our back legs here. So they get set down like this. This is the main floor mounting hole. And then this mounts up to these sides over here. And I guess depending on your setup, you could end up running in, running in different spots, but uh, on mine, I'm on the outer two holes. So we use our smaller Allen head hardware which comes with nylock nuts and double washers. So one washer on top, one below. And we will just set this in place. So like so. And I got too many pieces of hardware in one hand. It's easier outside of the car, guys, but kind of doing things a little backwards just to get it started. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about trying to tighten the nylon nut because they get impossible once you do them by hand at a certain point. Okay, let's mount our other just to kind of put things in place. All right, there we go, those are started. And I'll repeat the same for this side as well. And then with the inner side guys, you want to keep in mind, you're gonna be mounting your belt buckle bracket, which you can see installed over here with the uh, extended piece for the Mercedes stock buckle. But uh, you can, again, like I said, you can either mount it on top or below, it's up to you. Um, it doesn't really change much for me, I'm gonna have to notch out my seat brackets regardless so um yeah i i just mounted it on top but that said uh let me go ahead and situate leg last leg upside down sorry and get this thing fully sat down here all right you guys that seat bracket is all mounted up um what order you decide to do you know the legs and stuff is up to you um, the first time I set them in, I bolted, you know, like the back side of the legs down, then sat this on top, and then, you know, did my uh, Allen bolts with the nylock nuts, but that's up to you. Either way, it's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze, like doing the nylock nuts. So just, uh, you know, work with what you got. But this is all anchored down now, nice and tight. So the next step that I have to do... Um, not something you guys will have to do most likely unless you do have a set of uh, pretty wide seats like me is I'm basically just going to take some rough measurements um, of where I want the bracket to sit. Uh, this seat is going to be, you know, for me in the driver's seat. So I'm going to have to really kind of fine tune it right now to see how far back I want the seat. Um, I think like... That one is fairly close, but I think it's a little too um, far up for me. Um, so I'll probably have to mount it a little bit further back. But 
My other one is basically sitting the front side of the rails right at the washers for the front bolts. So it's kind of an easy uh, measuring point. And then obviously we cut the relief. Um, so that's the main part. I just need to measure where I'm gonna cut that relief out. And I ended up putting this underneath actually. I do think that's a bit better idea um that one's totally anchored fine like it's it's totally solid but uh the holes are designed for these washers and allen bolts um here so i just figured it'd be better if i put that underneath this time around so it won't really change much as far as mounting the buckle goes it might stick up a tad bit less but that's okay so um yeah i'm gonna start measuring my seat rails so taking my first set of rough measurements uh measure thrice cut twice something like that but i am uh thinking about putting it right here just because at least these holes will line up these holes almost line up um and then we'll make our notch right about here but it's pretty close i sat in that seat and it's like almost okay for me i i would imagine with the pedals so I think this will be okay. Um, I will basically once I notch this out. Um, well, I guess I gotta kind of commit, <laughs> but maybe that's uh, yeah, tough because I can't I can't really put the seat on here and then like put put this down to see exactly where I need to be because it's gonna be like rocking on the. Um, bolts that are hanging up I could I guess but and I think it'll be okay right there I don't think however that I'm gonna have much room um, in the back here but you know I better I better just uh, deal with the rocking chair and try to sit where I'm comfortable and then mark myself before I cut anything so They're all notched on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a little black paint to uh, secure it, keep it from corroding or anything like that, and we should be good. So we line up with our back holes here, and then I'll go ahead and drill one of these out in the front. And yeah, basically situate everything. I'm pretty sure I can kind of freestyle it from here because I know on the other side that this mount basically goes right up against the bolts. So yeah, once I get this side secured, just match it up on this side and uh, slide our seat in, bolt it up. All right, you guys, I got those situated. I'm gonna go ahead and test fit the seat in here right now, make sure it's uh, lining up and then we can drill our holes and be done with the bracket. All right, you guys, we are officially bracketed up. Next step, drop the seat in and got my bolts. Um, I do have to use, I think I mentioned it, I'm using a traditional hex head bolt on the inner one. I could probably get away with doing that for all of them, to be honest, makes it a little easier, especially the back sides. Um, but I can still use the ones that came with the little Allen bolts. So we'll stick with them and just use one hex head bolt where I need be. Fun fact, this is from a flywheel, I believe. So factory hardware for the win, keep everything. <laughs> All right, you guys, well, that's pretty much it right there. I still gotta do the uh, front bolt, but I'm gonna be putting up a fight with that one and I'm already sweating and it's late. So <laughs> for the most part, this video was to instruct you on how to install these brackets because I didn't really see a good video showing uh, anything for the W201 and 190s, etc. So hopefully this will help you guys just get an understanding of how this works. Um, there's many companies that make brackets for these, uh, planted, garagistic, like I used, um, Sparco has some universal ones. Uh, every, every seat maker has their own like universal brackets type thing. So you can look into it if you're curious, but the garagistic ones I like cause they're kind of modular, makes it a little easier to piece together, um, and have a little bit of like wiggle room for what you need to mount. And in this case, I definitely needed it because these seats we're definitely not intended for this car, but we're making them work. So I'm super stuck with it. I left this assembly undone because I am installing clutch pedals and uh, I need to figure out um, electronic throttle pedal and all that stuff. So 
yeah, that'll be in a later video, other video, if you're just stopping by the channel because you wanna learn how to do the seats, there you go. And for the other people that are involved in the channel, um, hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, this is an unofficial Benson on a Budget <laughs> piece. It's more so just for 190. So that's it guys, Sparco seats installed. Very happy. These things look awesome. Big upgrade. If you guys didn't check out Benz on a Budget episode 10, we basically changed the entire interior. Sorry, my light died inside. I was gonna show you guys, but black back seats, black carpet, black sun tray in the back. We have our black center console that I just haven't put in, which is gonna be a fight to try to get in, to be honest, because it barely fit with, I mean, even the stock seats in there is still a struggle to get out, kind of, so. With these things, wedging it in between, it's gonna be interesting, but uh, we'll see what we gotta do. So, catch you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace. Mm -hmm.